My name is Mark Polk and this is my RV garage. I got bit by the RV bug when I was 15 years old and still have it today. I started in this industry washing campers and since that time I've helped educate over a quarter million RVers on how to safely and properly use and maintain their RV. My favorite pastimes are RVs, muscle cars, and motorcycles. Welcome to my RV garage. Today we give the old Yellowstone a brand new rubber roof. When I made the decision to use a rubber roof, I contacted Dicor and within a couple of days the roofing and everything I needed to install had arrived. About 20 years ago, RV manufacturers started using rubber roofs on RVs because the material provides a watertight seal, it's easy to install and maintain, and it holds up well against the elements that it's exposed to. Dicor sent me a product called Brightply. It's an EPDM rubber roofing that's easy to install and maintain. It's highly puncture resistant, has superior tensile strength and tear resistance, and it's both reflective and refractive to UV rays. A big part of enjoying a long life from a rubber roof is prepping the roof before you put it on. I spent a couple hours yesterday making sure all the screw heads were flush or slightly below the roof decking and sanding any rough edges so that no part of the roof can prematurely wear the rubber membrane. Normally the metal or fiberglass would already be on the RV, but in our case I need to get the roof on so I can get busy installing and wiring some of the other components. The plan is to leave some excess rubber on the sides front and rear of the installation so we can install our moldings once the metal's back on. For more information on rubber roofing, take a minute to visit www.dicor.com. Installing a rubber roof or replacing an existing roof with rubber is not difficult. Let's get started so you can see how it's done. This episode of Mark's RV Garage is sponsored in part by Camping World, KOA, Explore RV Insurance, and Dicor. Okay, it's a good idea to use a, a seam tape for the seams on the roof, especially if they're more than 1 16th of an inch wide before you put your rubber membrane down. What it does, it covers the seam up and it'll cover up the screw heads, so if any of the screw heads are slightly above the decking this will help protect the rubber roofing from the uh, sharp edges Okay, one gallon of our adhesive from Dicor will do a 160 square foot application. We've got just about 100 square foot even, so we're going to use about three quarters of a gallon on the entire roof. And all you want to do is you want to make sure that you get a nice even coat on the roof. We're not going to go all the way to the end since I don't have the metal on yet. And when we do get our metal on, I'll brush a little bit of adhesive on and seal that final piece on the front and back.
Okay, we've got the back adhesive applied. And once again, we're just gonna roll this out evenly. See them crossing over the other vent pipe. Okay, this roof really went on nicely. Uh, we still have to brush out any air pockets. But right now we've got the uh, gray water holding tank vent and the black water holding tank vent that's creating a big wrinkle because of course we have to cut it out. What we want to make sure is that when we cut it out it's positioned where we actually want it. So I'm going to put a little bit of pressure on that. I can see my outline. I'm just going to go ahead and put a slit in here. best way to do this is with a pair of scissors. Just kind of following my the outline on the roof. Okay. Now what we want to do is just kind of work out this the sprinkle that we had. We actually did get our wrinkle out what we're going to do now is just finish trimming around our vent pipe. Now we want to get that front vent and then we're going to broom this out. Alright, the, the key to this now is you don't want to interfere, you don't want to push the adhesive that's underneath the rubber. We're just, we're just working out any air bubbles and you want to start from the center and work your way out to the front, the back, and the sides. There are some, I don't know if you can see that, but there are some air bubbles. We'll just push them right out. You see, it'll, it'll just push its way right out to the end and just disappear. And I think that looks pretty good, so what I want to do is carefully get back off of here and then I'll take one last look. Okay, we're going to go ahead and cut our vents out now. Um, that way we can push any air bubbles out that, that might be around the vent opening. And basically all we're gonna do is make two diagonal cuts and let our flaps drop down inside. So you just go from corner to corner. Okay, that completes the basic installation of our EPDM rubber roof by Dicor. Uh, normally, when you're installing a rubber roof like this, the uh, trailer or the motorhome would already have the metal or fiberglass sides on, and at this point, what you would do is install your trim molding around all the edges and seal everything. Of course, we can't do that with the project trailer because we're still running some wiring and things like that through the framing before we put our metal on. But that's the steps you would take. Uh, if your um, RV needs a new roof or you're working on a project like this, uh, you can't beat a rubber roof by Dicor. For more information on rubber roofing, go to www.dicor.com. If you've been RVing for a while, you have probably experienced holding tank odors in your RV at one time or another. This is quite common. Holding tanks in the RV are vented through the roof to release the gases into the atmosphere. The problem comes when a downdraft creates higher air pressure in the holding tank and the only place for the gases to go is to a low pressure area inside the RV. No amount of holding tank chemicals or tank cleaning is going to prevent these foul odors from entering the RV when there's a downdraft in the vent pipe. I have tried lots of products with claims of solving these holding tank related odor problems, but I only found one that really solved the problem. It's called the 360 siphon. The 360 is a fume extractor and the way it works is by using wind from any direction or angle to keep the air pressure in the tanks lower than the air pressure in the RV. It doesn't matter if you're parked or traveling or whether there's a slight breeze or a high gusty wind. 
the 360 creates a low pressure drawing the gases up and out the vent pipe. The 360 siphon quickly and easily replaces the original vent caps on your RV or it installs on new applications like our restoration project or roof replacements. Let me show you just how easy it is to install the 360 siphon. Okay, the ideal stack height for installing the 360 siphon is a half an inch. Now, if, if your vent pipe is, is higher than a half an inch, you can push this collar down in further. If it's lower than a half inch, you can raise it up. But I'm going to go ahead, since this is a new installation, we're going to go ahead and try to get this as close to a half an inch. Okay, whenever you're working with your roof, it's extremely important that you use sealants that are compatible with the type of roofing you have. Of course, we have a rubber roof here, so we're going to use butyl tape to seal the 360 to the rubber, and then we're going to use a, a Dicor lap sealant to seal our screw heads after we get it on. So let's go ahead, work the butyl tape around the 360, so when you put it down and put your screws in, it'll be completely sealed. Okay, the, the 360 would actually seal this area when this is on, but just since it's a new installation, uh, as a precautionary measure, I'm gonna go ahead and use some Dicor 501 LSW lap sealant just to run a bead around our opening in the roof. Okay, the collar on the 360 is designed to go into a standard one and a half inch pipe, which is the common pipe used for most, most vents. And basically the collar, you want the collar when it's installed to seal up against the 360 like that. So what I do is basically just put it into the pipe a little bit. And then when I put this on and press down, it'll kind of adjust itself. So we've got our butyl tape, we've sealed our opening, we've got our collar in place. The next step is to just put it down and you can see there's a little gap so when I press it adjusts itself. Now the only thing left to do is put our screws in. Okay, the last step I mentioned a moment ago is to install our screws and what you want to do is use an exterior screw and you want to put the screw in at an angle to make sure that this really bites and grabs a hold of the roof decking. And you'll probably see a little bit of our putty tape kind of squeeze out from the bottom as the screw gets snug. You don't want to over tighten your screws. You can see how it just squeezes out. That's kind of letting you know that you're getting a good seal. When it comes to sealants for uh, working on an RV, the only type of sealant I use is a Dicor lap sealant. It's compatible with all types of roofing materials. It's self-leveling and it works really well. So right now, to finish up the 360, what we want to do is make sure we cover our screw heads and get a bead of lap sealing around the outer edge. And then this, the installation is complete. Okay, that completes our gray water holding tank. Now let's go over and do our black water holding tank. With no moving parts and its simple design, the 360 siphon will work effortlessly for many years to come. Just think, no more unpleasant holding tank odors seeping into the RV living space. What a small price to pay to solve a big problem. For more information or to purchase the 360 siphon, take a minute to visit www.360productsnorthamerica.com. Don't leave home without it. When it comes to ventilation in RVs, my choice of products are Max Air products. On our Class A motorhome, we removed all of the power vent fans and installed Max Air fans in place of those. Now keep in mind, on our rat rod, we use whatever we have lying around the shop to help save some money. 
It just so happens I have the three power vent fans that I removed from our motor home, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with them, so that's what we're going to use on the old Yellowstone. Once we get done, I can take some brand new Max Air 2 vent covers that I have and install them over the top of these power vents, and then we can use them rain or shine. This will get us one step closer to finishing the roof on the old Yellowstone trailer. Okay, here's one of our old power vent fans off the motor home. Cleaned it up a little bit. We're just going to put our butyl tape right along the edge where we're actually covering up the, the screw holes. So when we put our screws through, we'll be guaranteed that this will make a good seal. Okay, we've got our butyl tape on and we're getting ready to install it in our opening. You, want, you always want to make sure and route the wiring so there's no chance of it getting pinched. And the vent always opens towards the rear of the RV. So we're going to make sure our wire is okay. And we're just going to drop it down in our opening. Now, it's like the 360 installation, we just have to put our screws in and our die core lap sealant and the installation on top is finished and then the only thing left is to connect the wiring. Go ahead and get the corners done so it draws down even and then we'll put some additional screws in like I said you want to see that butyl tape squeezing out a little bit we're just going to trim our excess butyl tape just want to use something that won't cut into the rubber Alright, we got this, we got our uh, power vent installed. Now, what we have to do, Tyler, is we put what's called a trim ring on. And it's really just to finish this off and make it look good. But the trim rings that come with these are pretty deep, so we have to cut it. Let's see, that's an inch, probably an inch all the way around. We have to cut the trim ring so it'll fit up in there. And uh, before we install the trim ring, we have to make our wiring connections. And then this is all done, all right? So I'm going to have you cut the trim ring, and I'll get this wired. Let me show you what you got to do. We're going we're gonna to cut this trim ring down to one and a half inches. So what I want you to do is mark one and a half on all four sides, and then use this to make lines. Once you get your lines done, give me a holler and we can uh, cut it. Alright Tyler, before we can put the trim ring up in there, we just need to make our wire connections really good and tight. What I always do is I check each one to make sure. See, what we want to do is get our maybe get our back in. See how that popped up. Now you just work work your and we don't want to pinch any wires, so when you are working on an RV electrical system, grounding is extremely important. Grounding all of the electrical equipment is necessary to provide a low resistance path to ground in the event of a fault current or short circuit. This way, if a person is exposed to a fault current, there's a lower path of resistance to ground for the current to follow. To do this, we ground the distribution panel to the trailer chassis, and for the 12-volt side, we ground all of the circuits to a grounding bar that will be grounded to the trailer chassis as well. 
All right, to finish up our power center, the only thing left is to ground our 12 volt side, and then we've got to run a ground wire from our 120 volt side to the chassis frame. Okay, I just routed this up from the bottom. Ground it to the trailer frame. That's about as good a ground as you're going to get right there. Okay, here's our, our ground for the 120 volt AC side. We're going to do the same thing we did on the 12 volt side. We're going to tie it into the ground bus inside the box. Get a good tight connection here. Ground wire for the AC side. Okay, now we're uh, trying to get ready to hook up our power cord that will come into the, the travel trailer. I actually had a 30 amp, 50 foot RV extension cord that was uh, damaged on one end. I'm going to actually cut this one off, um, 8, 16, 24, uh, it'll be about 20 six to twenty eight feet if I do it right here which is plenty this is uh, actually ten gauge wire which is what you would want to use for your power cord we've got our hot neutral and ground okay I actually have above this dinette seat inside I've got a small storage compartment built in and that's what's going to house my power cord I've got my electric hatch door that I won't be able to put on until after we put the metal on, but this is where our cord is going to go in. So we're going to go ahead and route this down through and make the connections at the power center. Okay, I've, I've got our power cord coming in, our main AC supply, and we're just going to connect our uh, 30 amp breaker. Don't miss the next episode when we install the roof air conditioner and other accessories like the TV antenna, max air vent covers, and a solar panel on the old Yellowstone trailer. At Explorer RV, insuring motorhomes, bus conversions, travel trailers, park trailers, and fifth wheels is our specialty and our coverages are custom designed to meet the needs of the RV lifestyle. To that end, we offer many benefits unavailable through typical insurance agencies, including total loss replacement, purchase price guarantees, personal effects coverage, awning replacement coverage, towing, and more. Choose the RV insurance experts. Choose Explorer RV. When we travel by RV, we sometimes take important personal items like an iPod, digital camera, car keys, jewelry, extra money, and important documents. Losing any of these items can end up being a very expensive proposition. It's also common for thieves to target RVs in other locations like beaches, hotel rooms, and gyms where it's impossible to always keep an eye on everything. The good news is, for less than half the cost of a digital camera, you can protect all of your valuables no matter where it might be. The way to do that is with a product called MySafe. 
There is the portable smart safe model and the personal smart safe model. The portable smart safe model works great in the RV. It combines a strong combination lock with a sophisticated motion alarm. If the safe is tampered with while it's armed, a loud alarm goes off and draws lots of attention quickly. The personal smart safe works great in your home or office. It combines a heavy duty radial lock with a sophisticated motion alarm and steel attachment cable to keep your valuables exactly where you left them. Regardless of the MySafe model you choose, your valuables are protected. The unique motion alarm has added security to prevent thieves from stealing your valuables and the compact size makes it easy to conceal the safe in a drawer, closet, locker or under a bed. You can even recharge your battery powered devices while they are safely locked inside. For more information or to purchase a MySafe product, visit www.zytel.com. RV Seminar DVD 6-Pack In an effort to make it easier for you to learn about your RV, we took six of our individual DVD titles and put them together in a full set. This DVD 6-Pack applies to all types of RVs and is equivalent to over five hours of one-on-one -on -one personal instruction. This seminar series was designed to present valuable RV information in video format using detailed graphics, charts, and hands-on demonstration, and you save a significant amount of money with the DVD set discount. Did you know that every single component in a towing system has a weight rating? This includes the vehicle, the receiver on the vehicle, the hitch, hitch ball, ball mount, and safety chains and cables. Never exceed the lowest rated component in the towing system. This towing tip applies to a truck towing a trailer and to a motorhome towing a dinghy. It's time for another question and answer. This question came in from Matthew. We went camping over the weekend and since then I have kept the fridge plugged in. While we were there camping and since returning, everything in the fridge is frozen solid. I have adjusted the plastic clip that goes over the fins, but it doesn't seem to do anything for adjusting the temperature. The cost to replace the fridge looks like a big ouch. Any suggestions, please and thank you. Good question, Matthew. You didn't mention a make or model for the refrigerator, but there are a couple things you can try. You mentioned adjusting the thermistor on the fins of the refrigerator. When you make an adjustment by sliding it up or down on the fins, you need to allow the refrigerator to return to room temperature and then cool it down again to see if there was actually a change in the temperature. I recommend you use a thermometer in the refrigerator compartment to get accurate readings when you make these adjustments. Try moving it down on the fins for less cooling. If the thermistor is properly attached to the fins, the wires have a good connection and there's no change after making adjustments, there's a good possibility that the thermistor went bad and it needs to be replaced. On newer refrigerator models, when a thermistor fails, the refrigerator goes into a constant cooling mode and eventually freezes everything in the, in the refrigerator compartment. Thermistors aren't very expensive and most are fairly easy to replace, but you'll still need to adjust the new one as well. Remember, RV proficiency improves with time, experience, and of course, education. Happy camping, and we'll see you right back here next time on Mark's RV Garage.